And now, Gangbusters! <laughs> Gangbusters, presented in cooperation with police and federal law enforcement departments throughout the United States. The only national program that brings you authentic police case histories. <laughs> And now to gangbusters and facts that show the operation of our law enforcement officials in their war against the underworld. Gangbusters has asked John J. Sullivan, former deputy police commissioner and chief of detectives, New York City, to narrate by proxy tonight's case. The inside facts in the case of the three safe crackers. Chief Sullivan, I know the case you're going to tell our gangbusters listeners about tonight will furnish unusual proof of the work of one of the country's most colorful teams of detectives, New York City's Safe and Loft Squad. It will, Don Gardner. If you and your listeners will bear two facts in mind. First, in burglary cases, it's extremely difficult for the police to get evidence for conviction. And second, the surest way is to know what's going to happen before it does happen. Before it happens? Yes, Don. I'll show you one way it was done. This case began on a bleak, overcast day last January at the huge Calvary Cemetery on Long Island. A lone man kneeled at one of the graves, unmindful of the young priest a few feet away. It's been a long time, Pete, but I haven't gone back on you. I want to be all you were, if you don't mind, more. I always looked up to you, Pete, and I still respect you. I've got the same kind of ideas you had. Oh, well, hello, Father. Can I assist you in your prayers, my son? No, thanks, Father. Uh, it's not what you'd call prayers. Besides, I was just leaving. Bye, Father. Goodbye, my son. Thanks, anyway. Next time, maybe. Well. Hello, Father. Eh? Oh, Captain Hanson. Are you policemen always hiding in the trees? <laughs> not always, Father. Sometimes we come out in the open... Are you here on business? No. I came out to visit the grave of an old friend. But, uh... Maybe it will develop into business, Father. You mean that uh, Marner I just spoke with? Yes. Strange seeing him here. I thought he was in Sing Sing. Oh? And what makes you think that man should be in Sing Sing? Because, Father, I sent him there. Uh huh. Well, if he's been released... No doubt he'll lead a good life. I wouldn't count on it, Father. You won't torment this man now because he came to the cemetery. Oh, of course not. I'm just going to see at whose grave Freddy Russo came so far to pray. Business. Just curiosity. Curiosity seems to be the main father of policemen. Also, Father, the main virtue. Your man Russo is going out the gate. Now, that's all right, Father. If I want him, I can find him again. Yes, I suppose you can. But here's the grave of his friend. Is your curiosity satisfied? No, Father. Now, I'm more curious. More curious? At the sight of this grave of a man ten years dead. Why, Captain, this is the grave of Big Pete Schneider, Father. Indeed. He died in Sing Sing. He was one of the most troublesome safe crackers I can remember. And, uh, he's still troublesome, Captain? Yes, very troublesome. Big Pete Schneider had a twisted pride in his trade. He enjoyed passing his skill on to others. One of his pupils was Fred Russo. Uh-huh. And if Fred Russo came to the grave of his master for inspiration, he must be up to something. I see. Well, give my best to the boys at headquarters. I will, Father. And goodbye. There. Yeah. There. Yeah. Go eat it. What's the matter? Can't you get your nose out of that magazine and give me dinner? You get here on time and I'll eat with you. You come late, you help yourself. Uh, Where you been? Busy. 
I didn't go to work today. I don't want you spying on me, Vera. Who has to spy on you? I can tell by the look on your push you didn't go to work. Okay, I was out in Long Island seeing an old friend. Now listen to me, Fred. You stay out of trouble. Well, you lay off. You'll be heading back up to Sing Sing. It's all right for you. They give you three meals a day up there. But what am I supposed to do? Go out scrubbing floors or something? I told you to lay off. Now that you're out, you ought to have sense enough to stay out. Big dreams you've got. Always big dreams. You got a good job. You're making good money. Play it straight. You might like it. What do you care where the dough comes from? As long as it's dough. <sighs> Come on, I'll give you something. Wait a minute. What? I was out to see Big Pete. Oh, so that's where. Yeah. Well, he's been dead for ten years. Let him stay dead. He never did you any good. He never did anybody any good. Not even himself. He left a lot behind, Vera. Trouble, that's all. Just trouble. No ideas. They're right up here. Big Pete piled them into my head one by one. But there was an operator. Yeah, and what did it get him? A sing-sing funeral. And that's the same thing it'll get you. It's going to get me a million bucks. All right, Fred, all right. I'm sick of arguing with you. If you want to go back, go ahead. I don't care. I'm not going back any place. I'm lining up a couple of guys. I'm going to teach him what Big Pete taught me. Just leave me out of it. That's... Okay. Just ask me for something when the dough starts rolling. I won't all. ask you for nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I will ask you for something. Go get yourself killed. Then I can blow my head off and forget about you. That's what I asked you for. <sighs> Come on in the kitchen. Oh, baby. I wish I could feed your brain instead of your belly. Safe and loft squad, Captain Hanson. Detective Clark, Captain. Well? Uh, the parole commission records show that Frederick Russo was released from Sing Sing October 1st after serving 11 years and four months. Hmm. Is he still reporting to the parole officer? Uh, yes, Captain. Once a month. He's been regular. He would be. What's his address? Uh, 450 East 21st. Yeah. East 21st. All right, Clark. Come on back to the office. Okay. Sergeant Ryan. Yes, Captain. Come in here a minute. Sure thing, Captain. Clark got an address on Russo. Oh, good. Yeah, from the parole commission. Sit down. Uh, I don't know, Sergeant. Russo might be going square. But what was he doing out visiting Big Pete's grave? Maybe looking to knock the knobs off some more safes. And if that's so, he can't do it alone. Now, I want you to find out who he's got and what they're up to. Yes, sir. You've got yourself, Clark, Sanders, Burns, and Garnett. I want somebody on Russo every minute until we find out what's going through his mind. You got it? We won't let him out of our sight, Captain. Wait till Clark comes in, Sergeant, and then get going. Okay. And remember one thing. I want them caught in the act. No other way. Come on, Fred, take me home, will you? Will you sit still, Vera? I told you, I gotta meet somebody. Anybody you gotta meet in this joint ain't worth meeting. Now, let's get out of here. Go ahead, Vera. Go home if you want. I'm gonna stick here. You gotta get up early tomorrow. Early for what? If you're so worried, I'll put you in a... Oh, there they are. Look, Fred, don't get into nothing, will you? Go on home. I gotta see these guys. Listen to me, will you? So long. I'll see you later. Excuse me. What? Oh, yeah, it's okay. Hello, guys. Hiya, Russo. Sit down. Well? I'll buy you a deal, Russo. Okay. But you still got to sell Laviola here. What's the matter with him? Nothing. Except I'm for sticking to my own knitting. You've been shooting off what an easy touch these safe jobs are. Well, that's something new to me. The way I hear, a safe job is the hardest trick to turn. You just listen to me and we'll do all right. What's the matter? I'm not doing all right now. Wake up, will you, Laviola? What you call all right is buttons. Okay, so it's buttons. But all them buttons are mine. They don't get cut three ways. What are you worrying about a three-way split there? This is big dough. More than you ever heard of. Tell me, Russo. What makes you such an expert? Did you ever hear of Big Pete Schneider? Yeah, yeah, I heard of him. What are you, his first cousin? Would you listen, Laviola? This is a good pitch. Okay, Russo. What about Big Pete? He was my professor in college. Everything he knew, I know. And I'll teach you what Big Pete taught me. Tell me, did he teach you how to stay clear of the Saban Love Squad? Yeah, that was the first lesson. Case the job good. Take nothing but cash. And they can't lay a hand on yeah, you. Yeah, unless they catch you red hot right on the job. Well, I was looking to be jumped up in the act. That's an accident. Yeah. Have you got anything oh, lined oh, up? Oh. Oh. Ah, it's only Barry. 
I'm going home, Fred. You come in. You stop talking about it and go ahead. I'll see you later. Now, listen here. Oh, good night. Ah, nice dish there, Rousseau. Talks too much. Do you know one at that? Let's get back to business, will you? Yeah, what do you got lined up? A loaded store, plus a couple of factories in the garment district. Now, what do you count on taking out? Plenty. Well, what's plenty? What are you worrying about, Laviola? If Russo says there'll be plenty, that's okay. It's okay for me, anyways. All right, Russo. I'm in. Good. Glad to have you. Let's have a drink on it, huh? Waiter. Waiter. Over here, huh? Sat there with the girl for a while, Captain. Yeah? Then these other two came in and took a booth. Joe Pelletieri and Frank Laviola. Mm-hmm. Russo left the booth and joined them. They're still talking. Okay, Sergeant. This looks like the mob. When they leave, one of you get with each of them. And stay with them. So, Don, even as the criminals were organizing, New York detectives of the Safe and Loft Squad were aware of their activities and laid their plans to capture them in the act. But unexpected developments upset the best-laid plans. Now, back to gangbusters. You were telling us, Chief Sullivan, how detectives of the New York City Police Department's Safe and Loft Squad had under surveillance a gang of criminals they knew were planning a series of large safe burglaries. That's right, Don. And the assigned detectives working in teams trailed their suspects around the clock. Days went by, however, and the criminals failed to make a move. Then one night, Sergeant Ryan and Detective Clark followed Russo and one of his confederates, Joe, into a Bowery dive and watched them as they stood at the bar. What do you say, Clark? Shall we get up close to him? They're liable to make us, Sergeant. Come on. It's worth a chance if we can overhear him. Okay. Get around on that side of him. Right. That guy's got to listen to me, Joe. I know what I'm doing. We're over here, fella. What? Yeah, yeah, plenty. Can we have a glass of beer? No, no, no. You can't blame him, Russo. He's getting the edge. So am I. Wait long okay, we're ready to go. When? In a couple of days. Oh, that's more like it. First, we need a few things. Well, there's well, stuff on this list here. Hey, that's a lot of hardware. we got to get it. Where's that beer? We split the list up. Buy the stuff in hardware stores. One item in each store. Now, let's go find Leviola. I think I know where he is. Uh, Drop some change in the bar, will you? Yeah. Come on. Now, uh, we get this stuff together. Let the three of us go out and take a look at it. That's what they said, Sergeant. Yeah, keep hot on them, Clark. I'm going to call Captain Hanson. Hello? Captain? Yes? Sergeant Ryan. I didn't wake you. No, no, no. I just got in. What's up? Clark and I caught part of a conversation between Russo and Joe. It's any day now. Oh? What makes you so sure? They're going out to buy burglar tools tomorrow. They're going to visit hardware stores. Grills don't grow on trees, not yet. That and the other one you looked at are all I got. Well, maybe it'll be okay. It should be. It's guaranteed for all kinds of heavy duty. You got plenty of bits? Yeah, plenty. Uh, make up your mind about the drill. I gotta answer the phone. Yeah. Phone, customers, customers, phone, all around this place all day long. Larry's Hardware. Hello. Don't say anything, Larry. Sergeant Ryan, safe and law squad. Oh, oh, hello. That guy in your store looking at the electric drill. Sell it to him. Yeah, but... Sell it to him, Larry, even if you got to cut the price. Okay, if you say so, but all this business I don't understand. Just be sure you can identify it later. Okay. And the guy, too. Uh, make a note of the serial numbers. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But now I understand. Okay, Larry. Be around to see you later. Oh, come in, Sergeant. Oh, Captain, looks like tonight's the night. They got enough burglar tools to crack Fort Knox. And you can trace them? Right back to the stores where they bought them. Good work. And what do you make it for tonight? Well, they got two places all cased out. Mm -hmm. A clothing store at 26 on Broadway and the loft building on West 27th. Which one do you think they'll try first? It's a toss-up, Captain. Well, I'd lay my money on the clothing store. They probably figure they'll have less trouble with the safe. And maybe get more cash. 
Okay. But keep the other place covered. It will be. I told you, Ryan, I want them hands down. And that's the way we're going to get them. The two of us are going to plant ourselves inside that clothing store and wait for them. We're giving the district attorney an open and shut case on this one. Well, looks pretty good from where I'm sitting. Well, let's not be too sure, Sergeant. This is a funny business. Anything can happen to queer the works. Oh, Fred! Yeah? What do you want? Come in the kitchen a minute, will you? Oh, these things. <laughs> yeah? What do you want, Vera? Open up this job, can you? Yeah, sure. Hey, where are you going all dressed up? Out. Out? Supper's almost ready. That's too bad. I'm eating with the boys. Here's, here's your job. I don't want you around those boys, Fred. They're nothing but trouble. Who's living my life, me or you? Well, you're not doing very well at it. Look, baby, tonight's the big night. I'll eat with you tomorrow night. You're not leaving this house. <laughs> so long. I'll I see said you. you're not leaving. Hey. You're not leaving. Put down that knife. I'll kill you. I swear I will. Cut it out now. You're staying here. You're looking for trouble, Vera. I've had nothing but trouble since I first laid eyes on you. Now wait a minute, baby. Fun's fun. Put that knife down. I'm going to put an end to my trouble right now. Vera. Right now. You <laughs> dirty little... Go on, Fred. You trying to kill me, huh? Fred. I told you to lay off. <laughs> Serves you right. So long. What time is it, Captain? Eleven fifteen. <sighs> you think they're coming? Who knows? I certainly hope they don't try the loft building first, Captain. I want to be in on a car. Don't worry, Sergeant. Shh. Oh. Working in the back door. Yeah. Come on. Quiet now. I wonder if the men outside spotted them. I'm sure they did. We'll wait till they get inside and start working on the safe. Then we'll nab them. Right. Shh. Come on. Get closer. This is the first time I wanted burglars to get into a building. Quiet. The door won't bust. Got to. Give it all you got. Come on, get it. All right, again, again. Okay, okay, hold it. What now? I'll leave it, Lay. Let's get out of here. We can't crash the door. Let's go. Get the stuff together. What do you say, Captain? Shall I give the signal to grab him? No, no, let him go. I want more than an attempt charge against these guys. We'll get them on their next one. Now back to gangbusters. Russo, Big Pete Schneider would sure be ashamed of you now. I would expect a burglar-proof door. Anybody but Russo. Lay off, will you, Laviola? <laughs> Big Pete must be turning That's over. That's enough. Take a right here, Joe. Yeah, Russo. We still got the loft building. We clean it out. We get 50 grand. Yeah, if they got no burglar-proof door. Let me worry about that. Just do like I tell you. Captain. Hello, Clark. They broke in the side door, Captain. Looks like they're on the third floor now. Did they post any lookouts? No, sir. We've got the whole block covered. Too bad you didn't get them down at the clothing store. It doesn't make any difference, one place or the other. Any orders, Captain? Stick here and cover for us. They'll probably come out the way they went in. We'll get them as they walk out the door. Yes, sir. I'll be with Sergeant Ryan and the others. So done, the safe and loft squad detectives had the 27th Street loft building surrounded, and they were waiting for the criminals to emerge by way of the door they had entered. Meanwhile, unaware of the carefully laid trap of the safe and loft squad detectives, the three burglars had completed their job and were about to leave the building. Come on, come on. Pick up that stuff. Yeah, let's go, yeah. You get it all. I don't want nothing laying around. To give the cops a break. Yeah, I guess that's all of it. I'll carry the tin box. You mind the tools, Laviola. I'll take care of the box. Get that Jimmy there. Where? There. Oh, I can. All right, come on. Drop it in the bag. Yeah. Okay. Let's get out downstairs. See, Laviola, didn't I tell you, huh? 
Can I tell you? Oh, tell me again when we're home in bed. Okay, hold it here. Now we'll get on the freight elevator and go out the way we came in. I don't like that elevator this time of night. What's the matter? We came up in it, didn't we? I don't like it, that's all. Why can't we walk down? It's only three floors. Because the fire doors and the stairs might be bugged, that's why. I don't want to hit any burglar alarms after we got this far. Get on that elevator. Why do you have to argue so much, Larry? Nothing's ever right for you. Oh, shut up. All right, Joe. Take it down. Yeah. Here we go. Hey, Russo. What do you say we put the stuff away and go out and celebrate, huh? Yeah, uh, you guys celebrate if you want. I gotta go look in on Vera. Yeah, what's the matter? Ain't she feeling good? Got a pain in the jaw. There we are, straight floor. Wait a minute. What uh, now? Look, we can play it a lot safer. What do you mean? Joe, take the elevator to the top. We're crying out loud. We'll Why? go up to the roof over to the next building and come down that way. Yeah, but Russo, that means breaking through another couple of doors. I don't want anybody to run into us coming out of here. That's a lesson from Big Pete. Don't be a dope. We're here on the ground floor. The street's ten yards away. We walk right out. There's nothing to it. Take her up to the top, Joe. That's silly boy. You heard what I said? Well, do it without me. I'm going out the way I came in. That's safe enough. Yeah, Russo, there ain't no sense to it. Somebody could see us coming out of there, too. Okay. Open up. We'll go out this way. Sure. All clear. Let's go. Hey, grab some of this stuff, will you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Go right out the door and walk away like you own the joint. No rushing, no running. Now, you got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Hold it here. I'll take a look in the alley. Okay. Nice and dark. And all clear. Let's go. Wait. Head for the car. Hey, cops, get him up. Yeah, okay, okay. Not me, so long. Get him. Oh. I got him, Captain. No, no, you don't stop it. Let's shoot him. Let's shoot him. All right, just keep him up. Who squealed? Nobody had to squeal, Russo. We've been right on top of you for two weeks. We could have nailed you any time, but we waited until we had you good. Now let's get moving. So done. That was how one gang of burglars fared at the hands of the New York City Police Department's Safe and Loft Squad. They're all back in the penitentiary. It was a real illustration of fine detective work, Chief Sullivan. Yes, and I think the men of the New York City Safe and Loft Squad deserve congratulations for their mighty good job. They certainly do, Chief Sullivan. And gangbusters, thanks to you for telling us this factual case history. Enjoying the timeless classics on Golden Age Radio? If you're loving the nostalgia and captivating stories, consider supporting our channel with a tip. Your generosity helps us continue bringing you the best of vintage radio entertainment. Simply click on the link in the description. Thank you for being part of our community. Lost in Brazil invites you on an unforgettable journey where every moment is an adventure waiting to be discovered. Join us as we uncover the soul of Brazil, one incredible experience at a time. Click on the link in the description and embark on the ultimate Brazilian odyssey. You have been listening to Golden Age Radio, rumble.com slash c slash g-a-r, brought to you by g3pl.com. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to Old Time Radio Research Group for their remarkable efforts in preserving and archiving the captivating world of old time radio programs. Their dedication to safeguarding these precious audio gems ensures that future generations can relish the enchanting stories, music, and entertainment of the past. Their invaluable contribution allows us to step back in time and experience the magic of radio history firsthand. Their link is in the description below.